Today we are going to discuss about sterilization and disinfection process. So before getting into the actual process, let us discuss some terminologies. So disinfection is the destruction or removal of vegetative pathogens but not bacterial endospores, usually used only to inanimate objects. Right? Sterilization, the complete removal or destruction of all viable microorganisms used on inanimate objects or non-living objects. Antisepsis, chemicals applied to body surfaces to destroy or inhibit vegetative pathogens like how we are using 70% ethanol for cleaning our hands. Chemotherapy, chemicals used internally to kill or inhibit growth of microorganism within the host like how we are using antibiotics. Right, this is the classification of different type of sterilization disinfection methods. So microbial control can be done by three basic principles that is physical method, chemical method and mechanical removal methods. Right? In physical methods we are having heat in that we are having cold heat and dry heat. A uh, cold uh, uh, dry heat and moist heat and then other option we are having is radiation where we can use ionizing radiation or non-ionizing radiation. Similarly in chemical agents we are having gases and liquids. Right? So as you can see in this chart some of the dry heat methods can be used for sterilization. Some of the moist heat can be used for sterilization while some of the moist heat method can also be used for disinfection. Radiations can also be used for sterilization as well as disinfection methods. So we will be discussing sterilization and disinfection simultaneously one by one, right? So first we are starting with physical method and that we are starting with dry heat principle. So the mechanism of dry heat is protein denaturation, oxidative damage, uh, then toxic effect of limited level of electrolytes inside the cell. So all these things whether it's include destruction of cell, right? So one of the important mechanism of uh, dry heat is flaming can see we are also using flame regularly in the lab we are using spread lamps or punching burners right they usually turn the materials red hot or they usually burns them so this kind of method is used for crystallizing inoculation loops or of buyers forceps spatula mouth or culture tubes second is we can use incineration incinerator is used for treating uh, or that you can say sterilization and disposal of bulk materials right like for example a lot of bulk waste is generated during hospital activities so amount is quite high right so those kind of things can be incinerated or burned in controlled condition using incinerator so in this we can sterilize surgical dressings disposable syringe contaminated lab materials animal carries beadings and so many other things also third method of dry heat which is very popular is hot air oven it was discovered by Louis Pasteur in 1986 the temperature is uh, in this we are using temperature range at around 160 degrees centigrade for one hour and 180 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes you can sterilize a variety of materials using hot air oven that is the scalpel, glass syringe, swabs, liquid parafilm and many more things. Next topic is moist heat. The basic, basic principle of using moist heat is when you use moist heat it will lead to the co coagulation of proteins and as you know proteins are the function, uh, main uh, you know main uh, uh, working force behind the cell and if proteins will get coagulated cell function will lose and it will die eventually so for this we can use one of the popular instrument is autoclave right so this is the first design of autoclave which was designed by Dennis Pepin however after this we have more advanced design and the actual uh, you know autoclave which we are using nowadays was designed by Charles Chamberlain he was a colleague of Louis Pasteur and he utilized the Pippin's uh, you know model and improved it and this is the model his model only we are using nowadays so how it works 
as all of you are using uh, you know autoclave in lab so you know we are filling it with water it's a steel chamber which we are filling with water what is getting boiled at 100 degrees centigrade it start uh, producing steam so when we close this steam will turn steam will come into pressure and this steam high temperature steam with a high pressure can penetrate and penetrate into the cells as well as pores and pulses the protein inside them and disrupts them now approximate conditions for moist heat killing for yeast is 5 minutes at 50 to 60 degree centigrade and for spores it is 5 minutes to 5 minutes at 70 to 80 degree centigrade in case of yeast in case of mold for vegetative cell it is 30 minutes at 62 degree centigrade and 30 minutes at 80 degree centigrade for its spores bacteria 10 minutes at 60 to 70 degree centigrade for vegetative cell 2 to over 800 minutes at 100 degree centigrade for spores virus is 30 minutes at 60 degree centigrade and 0.5 to 12 minutes at 121 degree centigrade so keeping all these things in mind the overall uh, suitable temperature decided for autoclave is 121 degree centigrade for 15 minutes at 15 lbs pressure next thing is radiation so radiation is other mechanism of physical you know sterilization and disinfection uh, radiation are of two types usually non ionizing radiations and ionizing radiations so example of non ionizing radiations are uv radiations and they cannot be used for sterilization and they are basically used for disinfection purpose they cannot remove the microbes completely right so they brings down the number of microorganisms present in the air or anywhere else wherever we are putting this uv light disinfection of operation theaters and biological safety cabinets we can use uv rays like we are using in lab in laminar air flows and bio safety cabinets what is the disadvantage it is having low penetration power that's why it is not very effective for sterilization purpose uv radiations around 260 nanometers is quite lethal but does not penetrate glass dirty films or dirt films water and other substances very effectively due to its penet low penetration power because of this disadvantage uv radiation is used for disinfection and not for sterilization purpose because uv radiation burns the skin and damage eyes people working in such area must remember that uh, remember to switch off uv light when they are working over there right uh, commercial uv units are available for water treatment pathogens and other microorganisms are destroyed when thin layer of water is passed under a lamp as you might have seen in water filters which we are using in homes the blue light which you are seeing is usually a uv tube next radiation is ionizing radiation so they are having high penetration power that's why they can lead to sterilization so some of the examples of ionizing radiation sir x-ray gamma rays cosmic rays however among all of them gamma rays are basically used for Uh, sterilization purpose so basically uh, sterilization of objects or materials through ionizing radiations is called as cold sterilization they are having as i told you they are having very high penetration power that's why they are very effective they are lethal to dna and other cell constituents constituents and kills the cell effective for heat level items as it does not increase the temperature that's why we are also calling it cold sterilization ionizing radiations is an excellent sterilizing agent and penetrates deep into objects it will destroy bacterial endospores and vegetative cells both prokaryotic and eukaryotic that's why it is having wide range ionizing radiations is not always effective against viruses mostly it is effective but sometime it may not be effective also gamma radiation is used in cold sterilization of antibiotics hormones uh, plastic disposals and various other things gamma radiation has also been used for sterilize and pasteurize meat and other food items R radiation can eliminate the threat of such pathogens such as e coli o157 x7 which is the most dangerous strain of e coli staphylococcus aureus and campylobacter jejuni fda and who has have approved food radiation and declared it safe current radiation is being used to treat poultry beef pork bl lamb fruits vegetables and spices thank you